Hi guys! Today we're going to talk about Beethoven's most famous piano piece, Fur Elise. I'm going to give you some top tips and tricks and hopefully some help at understanding and interpreting the music and getting below the surface of the notes, understanding exactly what Beethoven was saying. Fur Elise is a bagatelle and Beethoven wrote lots of bagatelles. The word bagatelle, it basically means a musical trifle. Um, a short but perfectly formed musical moment or thought. And this thought is encapsulated in a rondo form. And in music, that what that means is you have your opening material, so the theme everybody knows, and it comes back again and again and is sandwiched with contrasting episodes of music. So the piece was written in 1810. Um, it was a special year for Beethoven because it was a year that he wished to propose to the person who we think is Elise, Teresa Malfatti. I'll put a picture of her here. Um, we won't know for sure if it was meant for her, but we think it is because the autograph manuscript was found in Teresa's like personal belongings later on. So why would she have that manuscript if it wasn't written for her? There were a couple of other people who may have been, but let's go with the Teresa story. So in this year, 1810, Beethoven was teaching Teresa Malfatti, and as was his way, he fell in love with her and he proposed. So the story goes that he went to Teresa's house and he was going to perform for release as a way of proposing to her. That's perhaps the stuff of myths and legends. It's a nice story. However, she declined. <laughs> he never got married. He was he he asks many people, but always declines, you know, the eccentric composer. But there we are. The piece is written in A minor. And to be fair, I think Beethoven knew that this 19-year-old wouldn't marry him because a minor is quite a bleak key. It, it, it isn't a key that you would woo somebody. Like you'd use D flat major or A flat major, you know. A key full of love. It's a little bit bleak. It can be intense. In Beethoven, A minor is a special key. So you may have heard. The seventh symphony. So basically, A minor isn't a key fall in love with really. Right, let's get straight to the music. I'll put the score up above and um, let's see what we can find out. We have our opening theme and when you enter with your right hand, you're going to come in like a whisper. The music says poco moto, so a little bit of movement. So we're moving forward, we're not running, we're not rushing, but we are moving forward and it's a whisper, the first phrase. Okay, so it's a singer speaking perhaps, a singer singing perhaps. So you intone at the start of the phrase and die away at the end of the phrase. And I think what's happening here, can you imagine Beethoven saying, dear Elise, dear Elise, will you marry me? He's asking a question. Now, he's going to, we have a little arpeggio rising, an A minor arpeggio. He's, ask, he, he, he's asking, will you? We touch the E major. It feels a little bit hopeful. Let's hear that again. And the same again. Um, so the short phrases answering each other. Let's listen to that first part. hope in the middle and then sad resignation at the end there and then he repeats descending to the tonic there so you have to, a repeat of the first phrase and listen for the the hopefulness as we rise to E major and then Mm, the resignation when we touch the A minor. So let's listen to the whole of that opening. Listen to 
with an octave leap. When there's an octave leap in a melody like that, it's suggestive of a singer. Okay. Don't be afraid to take a little bit of time to express the meaning of the music. This section is repeated. Before we look at the next phrase, after the repeat, have a notice of a three of a rising step motif in, in the opening. A and then B, C, A, B, C. Okay, that's important because that's going to come back uh, in many forms again and again. In fact, after the repeat, we have our four rising steps. The sun's come out. We're in C major. He's hopeful. He's hopeful she might accept him. But straight away, those rising steps are turned on their head and we're descending again. So the semiquavers have the descending steps and also listen to the, to, to the descending steps in the thumb. G, F, E. We have our rising four steps, theme full of hope, touching the C major, and immediately we start coming down in steps, touching G major, but the dominant seventh, so it's soft. And then A minor, and then we get to our E's, and we have our really interesting broken octave feature, which is basically, we're searching. Okay, let's listen, listen to that. Searching, searching with the semitone. So I think we can hear straight away Beethoven. He, he knew he wasn't going to be accepted. I almost wonder if this was the piece is the story of his unrequited love. It, a major is really bleak when it's uh, to do with anything of the harp. So after we have our semitone searching, and to get that feeling of um, leaning in to the first, to the dissonance and then uh, resolving, it's a down up with your wrist, down up. And enjoy it, feeling that whilst you play. And straight back to. up to there and I want you to listen out for the feelings of the harmony, the searching, when the light comes out, when he's hopeful or when he's searching for something um, and listen for the steps, the rising steps or the descending steps and remember we're coming in with a whisper. Dolce, so sweetly, and we're going into F major. Now, F major is Beethoven's key of nature, of the countryside, of outdoors. Think of his pastoral symphony, and anything in F major, if it's, he ever wants a reference to his beloved nature, because he loved nature and being outside in countryside walks and rivers and streams and mountains and such like. He loved it so much, it was what kept him going through his deafness, through the struggle of his life. 
Um, so we are in F major, and to me, I feel like this is Beethoven out on a walk, maybe with Teresa, um, enjoying the beautiful countryside and the bird song and the sheep bleating. So have a listen. <laughs> Mozartian in its innocence and its sweetness. Did you hear the descending steps there? A little bit of intensity in the crescendo, it's almost teasing us. Touching the A minor. Resolving through D minor, oh, back to D major. And as this as this section comes in with these um, these chords, now I don't know if you could hear if you balance the chord at the top. You've got repeated C below four rising steps, and in the bass four descending steps. So we've almost got a light motif, a theme that goes through the four rising or descending steps. And you can choose, I maybe I want my tops to come out, the melody, or, or I'm going to listen to my rising inner steps, or my descending bass steps. A little bit like a string quartet, if you like. your right hand gentle but sing and now we have a delightful passage in C major with semi quavers and the four rising steps extended There's all the inner voices, and this is this is very sort of um, definitely string quartetty. So the surprise after the joyful C major. This is all all of that section. We're out in the countryside. We're walking. There are birds singing. His heart is full. It's full of love here. It's happy. It's joyful. It's sweet. Let's have a listen. our opening material and it's a big surprise oh, a new color and new sounds when you get to there and now it's a little bit like a fantasy take your time he does say poke it so get slower but it's almost like you're discovering the way you are finding the way with the notes it's you can take time happening where is it what are we doing what's going to happen and then and then you can think when you return to the theme have a different feeling the second time so maybe maybe it's not such a whisper as you enter maybe it's slightly more reserved maybe it's a little warmer it just depends how you feel You've been out in the countryside and now we're asking her, are we going to be brave and ask for her hand in marriage again? Maybe just have a different feeling. Maybe he knows like, they had the lovely time and that was the memory of the walk. And then back to the, the rather bleak A minor, mm, he knows. It's not going to happen. And so 
So you have the you play the full uh, uh, theme again. And so we'll go on to the next page where we have our next material. And um, we're going to see a little bit of Beethoven's intense and stormy side of his nature. First thing to notice is in, um, so we'll get to the end. We have our repeated A's. And you would think perhaps actually that might have inspired Chopin's um, raindrop prelude. And so on. It is a little bit similar, isn't it? You can use uh, three and two, three, two, one, or even use one finger and feel that weight going through. So, repeated notes in the bass are often in Beethoven um, a sign of something very intense happening. Uh, 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 one that comes to mind is his Opus 110 A flat major sonata. It's, it's one of his very last sonatas, and the heartbreaking moment in the in this slow movement. repeating A's. So it means something intense, something dramatic, something serious is happening. Diminished chord. Re resolving to the minor. So um, watch out here as well. We've got our four rising steps. So I think you know, <laughs> this is quite upset and not happy that again, he's been refused in marriage. I think it's the story, the piece is the story of this love, this failed love again. G-sharp. Okay, so let's hear it. And then it's a surprise. Our bass goes down to D, and it's D minor, but you must feel the surprise. And there's a subito piano there, which we'll look at. But listen in the bass, D, D sharp. Even the voice between um, the both the bass notes, you've got, watch out for the top with the A going down to the G sharp as well. D sharp. Okay, so let's listen to that. to the B flat major. Maybe it's not so um, like it's all over and it's, it's not so desperate as we thought. Um, the drama, the inner voices, the various guises of the rising steps, the descending steps, the surprises.
next section some A minor triplet arpeggios. So very light, very airy and searching, searching. <laughs> semi-quaver arpeggios, they're searching, and then your chromatic descending scale. And we sink back into our opening material. And it's got to be resignation, the last page. Sometimes you see in the score piano, sometimes forte. I feel that um, it's a desperate search, so it needs a crescendo. Enjoy using the left hand and the right hand between the um, D sharp E. You can enjoy that. in the score of sometimes the last note is just a bare octave sometimes and it's a pure resignation at the end so um, I think that hopefully by listening and also talking about some of the features um, it will help you understand it and maybe to see the whole piece as a story for going from section to section what's happening this is Beethoven, it's almost like, my, it's like a musical blog, almost. He's writing what's happened. It, it's quite clear to hear, isn't it? Always watch out for when there's a leap. It's like a vocal leap, so you feel that. Um, in tone, your phrases at both ends, so no bumps when you start and end a phrase. And have a really clear picture in your mind of what's happening in the music so that the whole the rondo becomes a cohesive whole okay i'll pop a link to a performance of feralise um but for now bye and i hope i was helpful and that you enjoyed it